Hello Internet and today is going to be a book opinion. Those videos in which I tell you my opinion on a book. Today's book is going to be Seven Tears at High Tide by C.B. Lee. C.B. Lee is also the author of Not Your Sidekick, a book that I truly love. So knowing her and loving her writing, I wanted to find more books by her and I found her first book, her debut novel that came before Not Your Sidekick because she's a new author and this one is also along the same bisexual line is also has an east asian main character and i believe it takes place in new zealand or australia I'm not quite sure it's what it's one of those two it's somewhere in that region if i'm not mistaken i'm sorry if it if it isn't and i'm just defending people because I know you can't just easily mistake people for coming from another country and not offend anybody. Point is, it's along those lines and this one is a male main character who is bisexual and he goes to a boat dock and he cries and he wants summer love. That's his dream. He cries seven tears at high tide and silkies which are this creature that ha are seals and they have seal skins, but if they take off their seal skins, they become humans. Silkies are in the sea and they are supposed to listen to the wishes that the sea collects, that the ocean collects, and they are made to make sure that those wishes come true. So a silky boy hears his wish and he ends up being the one who must fulfill this guy's dream and give him his summer love. So it's this little fluffy cute story about two boys falling in love over the summer. Now after reading this book and after looking at Goodreads and seeing some of the comments about this book and the negative ones I feel like it's necessary for me to point out certain faults within this book while I found it enjoyable. Now personally I put this in the category of a fluff romantic read. I really wasn't expecting much of it. Now that being said I do recognize that there are a lot of problems in this book when it comes to writing, when it comes to plot. Simply because in this book C.B. Lee makes common uh, writing mistakes where the plot is defined yes but she will make only very subtle hints that may not be easily recognizable if you're not an attentive reader. So if you're just reading to read but you're not reading to study and analyze you might not pick up on a lot of those things. And that's not a fault on the reader completely. Sometimes authors just need to be careful that the reader when they read will take out what you need them to, right? So you have to be explicit. It's something that like I have to explain to people when I tutor them on how to be a better essay writer. You can't always just assume that your re reader is going to pick up on stuff. Sometimes you have to be explicit even if it feels stupid because you know what you're talking about so you think it's repetitive. So C.B. Lee makes a lot of small little hints in here that go into the deeper plot that she tries to twist towards the end that has a little dramatics to it involving silkiness and scientists and stuff like that and you know what happens when scientists get involved with any sort of supernatural so you kind of get where that storyline's going and it was hinted towards the beginning that this was a possible storyline that this was a possible subplot that this story could take outside of its romance it was hinted that say uh, the coming of age storyline would be a possible subplot. It was hinted that uh, a study on Silky, a study on the Silky boy of him figuring out who he is would be a subplot all at the beginning. And a lot of things that I saw when people criticize this book is that they didn't see it, that they were expecting something else. And I completely understand what they're saying because when Lee gives you these little hints, when Lee points out and forewarns you that these are what she's going to come culminate in the end that her story is leading towards these paths she does it in such a way that it's almost hidden that if you're not looking for it if you don't know what to look for 
when it comes to plot analysis and figuring out how you get from point A to point B to point C very well, you could easily miss them because they're not always explicitly and easily found. And if you aren't the type of reader who is always trying to figure out what's going to happen in the future and you just like to live in the moment of reading, then you might not enjoy this book if you are easily frustrated by being surprised by the unexpected, right? Because you're just reading to read but you don't like when the outcome is so far off from what you believed it could have been. So this book I found highly enjoyable. I do think it suffers from just amateurish writing when it comes to plot sometimes where the plot just isn't fully explained in some parts or some parts could be more dramatic and some parts could have been less dramatic and some parts could have had a more emotional scene and description and better tied in together. I would say that this book if I'm going to describe the plot and how it fit together it's like a dollar store puzzle where you know all the pieces are cut out so that they can fit together but sometimes you gotta slap it down a little bit so it fits perfectly even though you know that's the piece that goes there and you know that makes the whole picture you still gotta smack it because they never cut it perfectly because they were lazy and it's a cheap puzzle this is kind of how that book feels and I'm not meaning that as an insult I'm just meaning it as it is a very amateurish thing in my eyes to do but that didn't take away from my enjoyment. So this book is definitely for those who love fluffy reads, right? If you just want to see two boys fall in love, if you just want to see a fun little romantic fling with an extra flair to it of silkies and magical beans being involved, then read this book. But if you're expecting something more, something really intense, something super dramatic outside of a simple fluffy romance read, then this probably isn't the book for you. If you keep your expectations to a minimum and just want to enjoy something sweet, read it. If you're expecting like the next Sherlock Holmes mystery and the next deduction, really don't read this book because that is not what you're going to get and you're going to be disappointed to a point that you're not going to be able to appreciate what this book is. So things that I did really like about this, I like fun little fluffy reads. So I like seeing the characters, how they work together, how they talk to each other. I like just seeing their relationship and like how sweet they were to each other. I just thought it was cute. It was just something fun. I liked the involvement of the silky mythos. I like how one of the kids was a silky. I liked how she created a mythos around it. Not as well versed in silkies as I could be. I know what they were. I'm familiar with a lot of mythological creatures but I'm not as familiar with them to say whether or not some of the things she does in this book are fully an original idea or if there's something that she took from mythos itself and just twisted for her own purposes. But I definitely liked it. I liked when uh, people put in the idea that sometimes scientists can get like too big headed and only care about studying creatures but don't really care that those things have a heart, they are living, they um, have rights of some sort. So I liked that aspect added in. I do think that it was a little forced into place like again it was that slapping down of the puzzle piece because it was hinted towards the beginning you knew it was something that was going to happen but it wasn't fully uh it didn't fully flourish to the extent that i would have liked it to see for this to fit better another thing is like i said this came across more of a fluffy romance versus a building budding romance this was just you seeing two people be cute with each other and you just ooing and eyeing over their adorableness but it didn't really have as much of that emotional like hard-hitting realism impact of a relationship and seeing that adorableness in the relationship because a lot of it felt like you're just seeing them walk across the beach but you're not feeling like you're with them while they walk across the beach which is really weird when you think about it like reading anything that has romance that you want to be there with them because it just makes you feel like a voyeur so I don't really know how I feel about my voyeuristic tendencies but it's something that we must admit 
is there when it comes to romance that the reader wants to feel involved and engaged in their relationship and not just ooing and eyeing from the back seat as an audience so even though they kind of are it's just a very weird thing it was like you got to see how cute and cute they were but you didn't get to like fully immerse yourself in their love like you didn't get to fully be there with them you just got to see how cute they were so at the end of the day i definitely think if you just want like an lgbt book you just want a cute and fluffy book if you are curious about books that like integrate um mythical creatures then maybe you would like this but if you're expecting like a great fantastic plot that is perfectly put together then don't read this one because there are definitely some like amateurish mistakes where it doesn't allow the plot to fully realize itself naturally and it does rely on the reader just putting things together which again is not a bad thing but sometimes can be hurtful to the book and to certain readers so this is definitely a mixed bag and it depends on the type of reader you are whether or not you're going to enjoy that the way the story is told i definitely think that cb lee has a fantastic story like she can create stories that i am interested in that i want to read i do not think this is her best work i think she definitely got better with not your sidekick i definitely think she is an author to continue to look out for and I'm saddened that her debut novel couldn't be like others where it was just perfect the first time but not everyone can be perfect the first time so I'm very happy that she has grown as an author and that really shows in her second book and I think that everyone should give an author a shot right you should always like read what they first did and then like compare it and see how much they've grown so that's really why I love this book I loved seeing how much she grew and I guess because I read her better work I could love this one in spite of it because I could see how much she improved it was like I was a proud person I was like a proud reader I was just like oh my gosh you've just gotten so much better that I'm not gonna be mad at your first attempt because it wasn't that bad and I really can't say anything because I can't write a book to save my life I'm a reader I'm not a writer so I really can't say anything on the subject against whether or not like you know like it feels hypocritical just to call her trash when I wouldn't especially when I don't think her faults are so big that she deserves a tongue lashing for it even though sometimes I am super critical and I just rant about writers all the time like I'm not above being hypocritical but that is all I have to say on seven tiers at high tide now one thing I want to ask you guys as I always ask questions at the end of my videos are you okay with fluffy romantic reads or do you focus solely on the plot like when you read a book are you do you care more about whether or not the plot perfectly fits together do you care about the characters and whether or not you found them adorable do you care about if everything is brought out to full three-dimensional fruition or do you just go along with the ride i know that's kind of a vague long-worded question but i just want to know how do you guys feel about reading books in which it was just like a light read or do you just stay away from them in general so if you like what you're seeing here and you want to continue to see more click all those bunny buttons down below and goodbye internet